Although you don't see him, Frank Sinatra played an important role in this film. He loaned Jerry Wald his house, which served as the Palm Springs digs of gangster playboy Nick Prenta. Now, I love my noir alley office, but I'd trade it in a heartbeat for a room in that spread. Twin Palms, as it's known, was built for Sinatra in 1947 and marked the real start of Palm Springs' growth as a movie star colony. Reportedly, Sinatra only allowed the film crew to use the exterior, maybe because inside he was having one of his epic tussles with Ava Gardner. And you can take that either way. The place is still there in all its mid-century glory, only now it's used for weddings and other private events, though I doubt those include gangland killings. One of Vincent Sherman's most important contributions to this film, as a writer, were the oil field scenes that bookend the story. Sherman explained that these were included specifically to account for Crawford's age. While the original story followed Virginia Hill from her hardscrabble youth in Alabama, Joan Crawford was 43 when she made this movie. Youthful was now beyond her range. Sherman admitted he was initially terrified of Crawford, saying, it's hard for me to communicate how much power she had. But Crawford gladly approved the script changes, and according to Sherman, she appreciated being included in the script writing process. On the set, Sherman claimed he had never worked with an actor who knew so much about filmmaking and was so cooperative. If Crawford had an idea, he said, she always presented it in a way that never undermined his authority, which she could have done if she wanted to, given her power. It was always her way to ask, never tell. And the director said that her attitude gave him even greater authority on the set. Vincent Sherman remains somewhat underrated by film historians, although not by the actresses who benefited from his touch, both on the set and behind the scenes. Now, he certainly doesn't have the renown of other Vienna-born directors, like Fritz Lang, Otto Preminger, and Billy Wilder, but that's probably because he was born in Vienna, Georgia, not Vienna, Austria. At Warner Brothers, he was in line behind stable mates Michael Curtiz, John Huston, and Raoul Walsh when it came to being assigned top-of-the-line scripts. Now, he may not have exhibited the same verve as those directors when it came to using the camera, but having been an actor himself, his forte was eliciting terrific performances, as he did with Ida Lupino in The Hard Way, a part that she resisted playing, Betty Davis and Mr. Skeffington, and Ann Sheridan and Nora Prentice. And he wasn't only adept with actresses. Kent Smith, who played Marty in today's film, gave his best performance in Nora Prentice, another woman's picture that's really a noir in which Smith plays the central, if not the title role. I hope to screen that on Noir Alley, along with Sherman's other terrific 1947 noir, The Unfaithful, again starring Ann Sheridan. Although he claimed to have been gray-listed in the 1950s for left-leaning sympathies he picked up on Broadway in the 1930s, Vincent Sherman would have a remarkably long and durable career. In his 80s, he was still directing regularly for television shows like Medical Center, Beretta, and Trapper John, M.D. In The Damn Don't Cry, racketeer George Castleman makes a sophisticated success out of coarse and unschooled Ethel Whitehead. Now, for the actors who played the parts, however, the reality was the opposite. It was Joan Crawford who got David Bryan his break in Hollywood. She'd met the one-time hotel doorman in New York after the war, encouraged him to try his luck in Hollywood, and set up his film debut in Flamingo Road, which earned the actor a contract at Warner's. He basically reprised the role of George Castleman opposite Crawford in the loopy 1952 melodrama this woman is dangerous, except in that one, it's Crawford who's the crime boss. Brian had one of his best roles in a little-known 1950 picture called The Great Jewel Robber, which I hope makes it to Noir Alley. The actor finally ended up on the right side of the law in 1954, the star of the TV series Mr. District Attorney. Next week, it's the TCM premiere of the obscure 1948 noir The Hunted. Be here when I reveal the fascinating story of its remarkable star, Belita, for whom I've carried a torch for many, many years. 
As always, share your bouquets and brickbats on the Noir Alley Facebook page and Twitter feed. Until next time, remember the words of Nick Prenta. Tonight, you're the guest of the house. Tomorrow night, that's different. Tomorrow, you can lose your shirt. <laughs>